Well, good morning, everybody. This is the Arizona Mining Review, and I'm your host, Mike Conway. It's the 24th of July, 2018. It may be the hottest day of the year out here, just outside of Florence, Arizona. We're with Dan Johnson, who is the vice president and general manager of the Florence Copper Company, and these guys are getting ready to put an in-situ copper resource mine in place. So we're going to chat with Dan for a little bit, and he's going to tell us a little bit about what's going on here. Dan, welcome to the Arizona Mining Review. Thanks, Mike. I appreciate you guys having us uh, you know, talk about our project. We're pretty proud of this project, and uh, we're right at the doorstep of getting it going. And uh, so, you know, this, this is exciting for us. We've been about five to six years into uh, the uh, development of this project, and uh, in about a month and a half, we'll be up and going and uh, uh, starting to circulate solutions and recovering copper by the end of 2018. Very good. And why in situ? Most of the copper porphyry mines in Arizona, as you know better than I do, are either open pit or some of them started out as underground. You guys are doing something entirely different here. Actually, this was going to be an open pit mine uh, back in the 1970s uh, by Conoco Oil. Uh, what they figured out, though, once they sank the first two shafts back then, is that they had a lot of water coming in. Mm -hmm. And the reason why is because this copper deposit is very highly fractured, especially in the oxide zone itself. So it would have been in a tune of about 30,000 to 35,000 gallons per minute coming into the pit. At that point, they decided not to actually do an open pit. Uh, Magma Copper Corporation came in in the uh, mid-1990s. They actually looked at this operation, and then since they were doing in situ operations down at San Manuel, as well as Miami right. East and Globe Miami area, uh, they thought that this would be the perfect place to do in situ copper due sure. to the nature of the highly shattered material that they encountered during drilling back in the 1970s. Yeah, and clearly the, the in situ approach is environmentally much more environmentally sound than perhaps digging an open pit mine that's definitely correct uh, you know i've been involved in mining for 30 years this is a the, the lowest impact of environmental aspects of any project i've ever been on uh, my background is actually environmental and water treatment uh, for the first 20 years uh, remediation but this project uh, since I've been building projects is the most amenable as far as low environmental impact mm -hmm. uh, there's no stockpiles there's no tailing impoundments there's no smelters uh, at the end of the day you return this uh, this property back to its original condition and you can actually build residential homes or put it back into the farming operations as it is today surrounded by farming yeah. operations and behind us here, you have your pilot project plant, which is, I think, got 24 wells in it. And what you're doing is basically proving the concept that in-situ mining is going to work here? That's correct. It's called a five-spot a five spot, uh, 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 pattern. Uh, basically, a dice has five uh, sure. spots on it. Uh, the middle well is the recovery well, and the I'm sorry, the middle well is the injection well, sure. and the, the four uh, outside dots are the recovery well. But with that said, we have four injection wells, nine recovery wells, and seven observation wells, and then we have over 21 compliance required wells that surround the, the operation at well is uh, in in this well field itself. This well field will go for about 12 months. Uh, we'll actually get pregnant leach solution type grade out of it. We'll be plating copper, like I said. Uh, so it's just a really unique project. Uh, the reason why in situ works here is because of the shattered nature. Mother right. Nature has been very kind to this deposit. There's no hydrofracking going on, never need to be. Um, so we have about 2.4 billion pounds of uh, recoverable copper uh, in the ground. With that said, though, only 1.7 billion will be recovered due to the, the type of geochemistry that we're doing with the solvent extraction, electro-winding type of uh, plant technology we're doing. Okay. And this plant is going to go for a year, and then you move on to a larger plant. How much, how deep do you got to go with these wells? These uh, wells actually extend from basically the top of the bedrock, which is about 425 feet, uh, but the screen starts at 500 feet below the ground and then it goes down to 1,200 feet. About 700 feet of uh, uh, ore body we're actually okay. targeting just for this pr project itself. The commercial operation, like I said here, we're only going to make about a million and a half pounds of copper in the 12-month period here right. for this small uh, well field. 
our commercial operation will be 85 million pounds a year for almost 20 years. Uh, again, that's about 1.7 billion pounds at about a dollar ten, dollar eleven, a very economical yeah. deposit. And in fact, we're in the top five percent in the economics in the world for this type of tech uh, for copper recovery technologies. Yeah. So that ensures the community and the state that this project will be going for many, many years to come without its, uh, you know, economic uh, challenges. So. And the pregnant solution that goes into the ground is mostly water with a little bit of sulfuric acid in it and no chance that you're going to have any issues with the aquifer locally? No, not, not at all. I mean, these are highly engineered wells with very uh, sophisticated seals and uh, sophisticated uh, casing designs. Uh, so there's no way for it this to actually uh, uh, impact the drinking water in this area. In fact, we go well below the drinking water, hundreds of feet, to actually recover this. The drinking water is up in the more of the alluvial, unconsolidated material. And again, I just said that we have seals and casings yeah. through that. It's actually a five-layered type of seal uh, uh, construction um, uh, type of uh, design. So that assures that the water is protected in this area. So what's the lifespan of a well, of, of a, a mine like this? A well actually can go 30 years. In fact, okay. uh, there's wells here uh, that was put back in 1970s and actually 1980s, and they're still uh, in very good shape to this day. Uh, these type of wells are actually highly uh, uh, engineered. These could probably go for 40 to 50 years, if, okay. but again, we'll be actually mining uh, commercially in two to three years. I'm pretty confident of that. Uh, once we get through with this pilot test, we'll go into the commercial phase, hopefully with no lapse of production. And uh, we'll be going, like I said, for another 20 plus years. So. Okay, very good. And I gather you're going to be hiring a number of people. I think your website said about 500 people will ultimately be working on this plant for a number of years. Brings a lot of money into Pinal County, brings a lot of money into Arizona. Yeah, so for full time workers, we'll have about 170 uh, direct jobs for Florence Copper. Then we'll have drilling jobs. The drilling jobs are sure. like contract mining jobs when you look at it. They're full time positions as well, 24 hours, seven days a week type of jobs. So that puts us up to 245 people. The 500 actually is all the services and suppliers and consultants uh, yeah. that, that we hire over time. So uh, we're excited. I mean, this is uh, going to be a big shot in the arm for the community, for Pinal County, and for right. definitely for the state of Arizona. We're talking $3.4 billion uh, of revenue at the end of the day that's in service into the, yeah. the, the state at the end of the day. And you'll be doing your own production here using electro winning. So there's no smelting or anything of that sort. This is an electro winning project. And you do it right here on base? That's correct. And uh, I think I was telling you early, actually, electro winning uh, solvent extraction was developed in the state of Arizona in the late 1960s in the Globe, Miami area. So this technology is well uh, versed and well understood. And what's beautiful about this is even the environmental aspects. Uh, you know, I, I'm a traditional miner too, but uh, this is awesome because we're, it's only basically a, a three-stage process, uh, injection, extraction, and plating. Uh, where the smelter operations are, you know, you have to go through concentrations, refining, all that. So that's what makes it so economical as well. So at the end of the day, we, we make 5.9 copper, as we call it, 99.999% copper. So wow. it, it goes out in the truck and it goes right to our user. Very good. Yeah. Excellent. And we'll get a chance to see a cathode here in a little bit. Is there anything that we haven't raised yet or that we haven't talked about that you guys would want to chat about? Yeah, we, we do actually a lot of uh, environmental aspects, uh, studies on the project as well. We actually have some uh, uh, prior historic uh, Indian tribal um, okay. uh, artifacts on the property. So we do a lot of uh, you know, avoidance, of course, and then preservation as well. Can't get into the specifics about sure. that, but we spend millions and millions of dollars to actually preserve the, the former cultural historic nature of this yeah. property as well. And just in, in general, we, we avoid things that uh, don't need to be impacted at all as far as environmentally. Uh, we have a very uh, you know, robust uh, environmental program. Uh, we're probably the most regulated mine in, in the state of Arizona, if not the United States yeah. at this point. But uh, we're very proud to get going. So, yeah. so you're really the sort of the tip of the 21st century mining. I mean, you guys are new technologies, new ideas, new concepts, and new ways of doing things that are more environmentally sound than in the past. Yeah, we have a lot of eyes on us internationally. Um, it's, uh, we get a lot of calls asking for our expertise. Right now, we just want to get this going. We do uh, give some con consultation to these folks, but of course, you know, our, our main focus is the Florence Copper Project at this point. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see what we can do in the future with other deposits doing this technology, but uh, we're just excited. 
to Good. get going on this one. Okay, well, we're looking at a typical well box, and this is in your everyday type of well, of course, and a well head itself, a starter box, and you can see how, uh, you know, it, how highly instrumenta uh, instrumentation it is. And I didn't say that probably right, but uh, you can see all the internet website cables and stuff, um, and you can see it going into a data logger. Uh, it records thousands of different data points every day, and this actually goes back to our control room. And our uh, control operators in the control room can actually operate this well just at a touch of the button back there in the control room. And that's what, uh, in 20 years, I mean, uh, they did this same technology back in uh, 1998, uh, but the wellheads look much different than this because um, this is, you know, fully automated at this point. And then we do manual checks as well. So we just don't rely on all our instrumentation going back to the control room, but we can come and physically check this instrumentation as well. Well, I'm here with Dan Johnson at the demonstration plant for the pilot drilling project you just saw. And Dan's going to tell us a little bit about this plant. Well, this plant's only uh, actually designed to make about a million, a million and a half pounds per year. Uh, it's a very small uh, package plant, as we call it, but it's a very much of a replica of a larger plant that actually has been going on for solvent extraction electro winning for 30 plus years. Um, this is, we call it the demonstration plant, but we also refer to it as the production test facility as well. But uh, this is about $25 million plant. Uh, afterwards, uh, once we um, actually get the copper, we think we're, you know, we'll feel confident we're going to get out and demonstrate the technology. This actually can be used for other uh, processes in the, in the future once we get the commercial operation going as well. Very good. Thanks, Dan. So right now we're standing on top of one of the berms of the main process pond, and uh, we're looking southwest uh, from the plant area there. You can see a landfill out in the distance there, but that's a Gila River drainage right there. And as we pan right, you'll see all the plant and all the tanks involved, and then you can see the high-powered lines to the right. The infrastructure of this project has been very gratuitous for us. Uh, we have a railroad road right next to us. Uh, we have these main power lines right next to us as well, and a very good highway system. So um, we have everything right here, right, right uh, at our fingertips. And then out there, you can see the well fields. It's about a half a mile away from the process plant. We have uh, pipelines that actually report from the plant out to the well field and double line containment systems. So a very highly engineered environmental system at that. As you pan around, you're going to see uh, the, the main impoundment that I was talking about. And uh, this it holds about 13 million gallons. And this is for solution management itself. Uh, we actually install high density polyethylene as a double line system with actually a geo grid in the in in between the two liners so if the primary liner as we call it the top liner gets a slit in it it actually reports to the sump between uh, the, the secondary liner and the primary liner it's a leak collection system and it's all the way on the other side uh, there's a pipe pipe two pipes sticking out on the other berm over there if you look in the distance so and on the corners we actually install a fabric type of uh, highly uh, a liner system so actually wildlife can get in and out of the uh, out of the pond if needed so uh, we, we might make sure that our, our wildlife uh, is fully protected in this area and uh, that this is actually something that's been derived about 10 15 years in the mining industry to make sure the wildlife uh, like I said can enter and, and exit these ponds well we're finishing up here with Dan Johnson at Florence Copper just outside of Florence Arizona and he's going to give us an overview of the entire project and the way it's going to look when it's operational Dan I'll let you have the, the mic Thanks, Mike. So this is a really good diagram to speak from. Um, so we have an in-situ recovery well area. Uh, again, these wells go down about 1,200 feet. We actually pump the solutions to the surface and actually go into a pregnant storage tank uh, at the, the process plant itself. It goes through three different stages, a, a solvent extraction, electro winning, and then we actually take the, the raffinate solution, as we call it. Basically, it's a, a solution that's already been, it has been stripped with the copper and actually re-inject it back into the, the, the ore body itself. So it's a closed hydraulic loop. 
And so we actually are very conservationist, conservationist uh, as far as water management out here. And it's a really neat project because of that. Our, our ore body is actually fully saturated. It has been for tens of millions of years. So we have a good flow through regime that goes through the ore body, which we can actually reacidify the raffinate material going into the tank, or back into the well field rather, dissolve the copper and go back through the cycle and over and over and over. And that's how we actually get this about a 100 pound uh, sheet of copper. This is uh, pure copper, as I uh, talked about before, 99.999%. Uh, Again, this uh, technology was developed in Arizona and it's, it has over 40 years of history, so. Dan, thanks for joining us on the Arizona Mining Review. Oh,